I'm uh, just Harvey Lewis, just one Harvey. of the Lewis family of Lewisburg, the only one left. Okay. Lewisburg, 1923, mm -hmm. according to my mother, mm -hmm. she should know. After I graduated from Val Dalhousie, my idea was to get, get in the Air Force, but on the day before I left, I got word that I was to go to Ottawa and work at the National Research Council. So I spent the last two years of the war there, uh, working for the Air Force, instead of being one of these honorable fellows with a uniform and good pay. Mm -hmm. And then as soon as the war was over, I left there and went to uh, London, Ontario, and uh, took a short course in business administration. Okay. It was an intensive course for people who had been either in the forces or worked for uh, the war effort and had a degree and uh, had spent too many times not using their degree so they would be capable of being uh, captains of business. I could say the business of Lewis and Company was founded long before that in 1878, 79, I think, by my grandmother. Her name was Naomi, and uh, her husband, Captain Will, had a schooner and sailed along the coast of Nova Scotia and down to the West Indies. And on an occasion, he came into uh, Cow Bay, Grace Bay, I assume to get a load of coal. And while there, he had arranged for his uh, girlfriend to meet him in Myra, mm -hmm. and they were married. And she sailed with him on the boat immediately. Mm -hmm. And she sailed for about a year until her condition was such that she couldn't fit through the doorways, the companion ways of the ship, so she had to come ashore. So they decided that they would settle in Lewisburg. Mm -hmm. They didn't have any Lewisburg connection at all before that. So they came here and bought a house and she immediately set up a shop in the kitchen to sell groceries, mm -hmm. sugar and some of the things she could bring back from the West Indies or in trading. She uh, started to build a family or had started to build a family. And it was about oh, three years later, I guess, before he decided to stay ashore and have other people operate his boat. And, um, started a business with a cousin of his called Lewis and Company. They uh, had several locations in Lewisburg where they set up a grocery store, but they realized the best place to be was down on the waterfront. So he built a store then in 1902, I think, or something like that. They set up business there with both retail and chip channeling mm -hmm. services. And uh, then he and his partner separated and the partner uh, got another towboat and went to sea, and well, up around St. Peter's, around the canal there. And so grandfather continued with the business down here. I mean, it was two-story, and a building 35 by 60, I think it was, down on the waterfront. <clears throat> but they were interested in two kinds of business, the business off the harbor and the business of the town. So I finished in London in 1946 or 47, then came back to the store. I was uh, considered a grown man then, so I just had to dig in and do all the work. Mm -hmm. And the one thing about the store, nobody had a job as far as the family was concerned. They had to do everything. Mm -hmm. And every, the family appreciated whatever each one of the family did, and there was no criticism. You didn't do it wrong. Mm -hmm. You did it the right way first. <laughs> when my grandfather came here, uh, it was not an incorporated town. And he and some of the other business people around town were anxious for progress, and these Americans came and wanted to build a steel plant. Mm -hmm. So Lewisburg was the ideal place. It had the proper harbor and everything. So they were making progress and telling them that here's the place to be, you've got the waterfront and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but Sydney offered them tax concessions. Mm -hmm. Lewisburg couldn't offer them tax concessions because they weren't a town. So that sort of fired their mind, okay, somebody else will come along someday, so let's get incorporated. They didn't get incorporated, and my grandfather was the first mayor. And uh, he was mayor for nine years, I believe. Mm -hmm. And uh, during that time, they tried to improve Lewisburg, and of course, they, being a, a growing community, there were so many things to be done, but they did, they made a little town out of it. So they built their uh, businesses here on uh, the fishing trade, and then as the steel company had, and coal company, uh, the coal company came and built their piers, well, that built a, uh, a terrific amount of business for them. The coal company at that time was shipping a lot of coal, mm -hmm. but they had their own fleet of ships. Dad was very fortunate that he had a, 
uh, good uh, relationship with the people of the coal company and the steel company. They were friends, they borrowed, they, they uh, helped in any way that they could. Days when the uh, uh, service boat was having trouble getting out, if it was a ship that had to be uh, come into the dock, they'd send out their towboat and so he'd get a hobo on that and get out there too. Mm -hmm. Then we get into sword fishing, which began in the 30s, I guess. Most of them last landed at Lewis and Company's Wharf. Uh, Dad had sort of built an alliance with a lot of the fishermen from the western shore in that he paid cash for fish. He didn't wait until to sell the fish uh, in Boston and then find out what he made and then tell the fish, which all the other did him do. But he had a good relations with the uh, man to whom he sold the fish in Boston and they talked with him every day and they considered what the weather was here, uh, what the holiday season might be in the United States and everything to know what the market was going to do and they would establish what should be a price. Father was born in 1895 and he had to go to work at 16 because the business fell into difficulties and his um, uh, mother was operating the business and so she took George at 16 years old, I think, as her assistant to operate the business. And he was there until he died. He was a merchant all his life. Then later he got cajoled in being the mayor of Lewisburg for a while and then came back to being a, a merchant. And by that time I was coming around and he was getting old and tired. So he retired. So the fish plant was still in operation, I guess, when I was convinced that I should try to be mayor. I had a store to operate. Dad and Uncle Phil were getting pretty old. I had a pretty good staff. And uh, so they convinced me that I should take a try at it. So in the 20s, the Methodists were getting scarcer. And the United Church was growing. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it was, I think, in 1925 that the United Church eventually became a church. So many of the Methodists that were around here joined the United Church and no longer used this church. It sort of lay idle and they rented it out to different other organizations. I think the temperance organization belonged for a while, but they couldn't afford to keep it. And uh, political meetings were had in there of all things, cigar smokers and drinking rum in the <laughs> temperance hall, but that's politics. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it lay idle. So uh, we were living here, nice backyard, kids playing out there on the rink in the backyard and everything. And uh, so I decided that, uh, told Kathleen, I'm going to buy the church. So when my father heard about this, he said, no, you're not buying it. He said, I'm buying it. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to give it to the town as a library, mm -hmm. which he did, okay. named it after his father. One of its great possessions in there, it has a diary that was kept by Mr. Huntington, who used to be a mayor of Lewisburg, for I think 30 years, mm -hmm. and it's a book every year in which he hand wrote mm -hmm. every day what was going on in Lewisburg. Mm -hmm. I was involved so much of it that I, I mm -hmm. couldn't help but think that it's the most wonderful place in the world. Mm -hmm. And I still, despite all the mistakes that I think they make, <laughs> I still think it's a wonderful place to be. God's little Garden of Eden here in Lewisburg. <laughs>